So an, a way to visualize a partition like this, it fits into an m by n minus m box. Right? So it's a generated function for partitions that fit inside this box, where we have n rows and n minus m columns. Any questions about that? Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to, so this is not exactly what we want. We're looking for generating function of partitions with perimeter less than a certain number, right? Uh, and also this doesn't even necessarily have distinct parts, but we're going to mess with this until we get the right generating function. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a partition like this and we're going to add to each part well, starting at the bottom row over here, we're going to add 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on to the parts. So we're going to take the bottom row, which might be empty, but that's okay. Then we're going to add 1, then we're going to add 2, and so on. And to the top row, we add M. Okay. So we do that to a partition like this. <clears throat> the new partition is, again, it's going to have, this time, exactly M parts. And each of those is going to be size less than or equal to n. And now, not only will it have exactly n parts, those parts will be distinct. Okay. Is everyone clear that if I take a partition like this and add those to the rows, then I get something like this? What's the rest? So uh, what I'm doing is I'm taking this box and I'm adding I'm adding one box to the first row, two boxes to the second row, and so on. Right. Okay. So not only does that make sure that there's now exactly m parts, they're all they're going to be distinct. Uh, also. Yes. Okay. So that's getting closer to what we want. So now how does that mess with the generating function? So this is the generating function according to size. So it's like we're adding 1 plus m, 1 plus 2 plus 3, all the way up to m to the size. So now we have a new generating function for that type of partition. So if I look at q now, so we're adding actually m plus 1 choose 2 to the size of the partition when we do that. And then times n choose f choose q. So now this is the generating function for exactly m distinct parts. Each of them less than or equal to m. Right. So is everyone clear with that? Okay, so now if you if it fits in a box like this, the perimeter is going to be the width of the box plus the height of the box minus one because you double count one square. <coughs> so another way to write this is the perimeter is going to be less than or equal to I don't know. No, it will be strictly less than uh, m plus n. So now we're almost there. If we take n and we replace that with s minus m, that means that q to the m plus 1, which is 2, times s minus m, which is m sub q, is a generating function for exactly m distinct parts with perimeter strictly less than s. Any questions about that? So remember, in the beginning, we want we want the generating function where the perimeter is um, strictly less than s, and so all we need to do now is sum over the number of parts. So 
finally, the generating function which we want for distinct part partitions that are s, s plus 1, 4. So by that theorem, we just want the partitions that have distinct parts and perimeter less than s. So we sum that m equals 0 to s of q to the m plus 1, which is 2. s minus m, choose m, sub q. Okay. And so that's our generating function. So any questions about that? What is my comment? We could this one and get the famous expression for Fibonacci numbers. Right. So this, yeah. So this is one proof that when you plug in two is one, you get Fibonacci, and that's just the number of those partitions. Right. So, and now, just like before, now that we have this one and two moments, but in this case, it's really nice because this is a, a Q binomial sum, and it turns out that GC has a nice package for dealing with these. So what we do next is we use Q a con. To not only guess, but actually prove a recursion satisfied by this generating function. So right, this is actually a sequence of generating functions and it turns out using this package, we can find an explicit recursion. And so it's the coefficients of this recursion are going to be like, they're going to involve Q, right? It's going to, they're going to be polynomials of Q to the S. Okay, but the point is, we have a recursion, so we can really efficiently find this generating function now. Any questions about that? And so just like before, now we can crack out the numbers of the box. If this function satisfies some kind of Q recursion, then if I make substitutions into that and get just numbers, they're going to satisfy a uh, recursion where the coefficients are just finite uh, numbers, right? So what I mean is that from this it follows that, so if I take this and I do I apply that operator Q times the derivative to the K this generating function, and I substitute in q equals 1, All right. and I can do this. So I get a sequence uh, for s equals 1 to infinity. This is going to be c finite for each fixed k. Okay. So this is not exactly the moment because we didn't divide, but this, this sequence is going to be C finite, meaning that it satisfies a uh, linear recurrence. Right. With constant coefficients? Yeah, with constant coefficients. Okay. Any questions okay. about that? Okay. <clears throat> and so this means that in this case, we have we have machinery to not only conjecture, right, just plug this into like uh, something to guess a C finite recurrence, but also prove, because when it's C finite, you just need to verify for enough values, and you have an actual proof. So again, we have uh, rigorous expressions. For the case moment. So remember the case moment is this whole thing, but you gotta divide by the when you substitute in one, which is actually the Fibonacci number. So it turns out you get this C finite sequence, which actually is written as a polynomial times a Fibonacci number plus polynomial times another Fibonacci number. 
So that's the C finite part. But then you divide by the total number, which is Fs plus 1. All right, so just from experimental evidence, these are polynomials. And we found that each case moment is of this form for certain polynomials. So in this case, it's not exactly a polynomial expression. It's a linear combination with Fibonacci numbers divided by Fibonacci numbers. Okay. Any questions about that? Okay. Okay. And then, so finally, going back to asymptotics. So once we get the <coughs> explicit expressions, we can easily take the limits because we have polynomials and we know the Fibonacci part, the ratio will just go to the golden ratio, right? Yeah, question. So there's no K on the right hand side of that? Doesn't depend on like. Oh, so I'm saying these polynomials depend on K. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, so these definitely depend on K. So for each K, we have a certain conjecture. And I think we went up to 16. So we have rigorous uh, proof for a K equals 16. And uh, so we found that, um, so this random variable, the other one was not concentrated. This is concentrated out to me. Meaning that the standard deviation over the uh, expectation goes to zero as s goes to infinity. And also, so like I said, we found 16 moments, right? So we standardized those and computed the limit. And we found that all 16 of those go to the normal ones. So uh, 1, 0, 3, 15, and so on. We found all 16 of them to agree with the normal distribution. Um, as it was zero. zero. Missing a zero in there. Mm. Yeah. Right, so I'm missing a zero. As S goes to infinity, they all approach the normal ones. Okay. So obviously that's not a proof, but that, I mean, it, it kind of fits. So, <laughs> <laughs> conjecture that this is asymptotically normal. And oh, I should have, have again, this is just SS plus one. Okay, so we couldn't do it in general this time. So one of the distinct parts, SS plus one, we conjecture this is asymptotically normal. Okay. Um, question, yeah. Are there any clear relationships between consecutive AKs and BKs? Between like, are oh, these polynomials yeah. completely yeah. random? Or? Uh, not that I know of, but we didn't, I don't think I looked into that. So I'm not sure how these, like if there's a recursion or something for these polynomials, I'm not sure about that. Okay. Other questions? Okay, so yeah, last thing to say would be, like I said, the dick path thing does not seem to work. Like if you, you can do the dick path thing, but it's not gonna give you enough data to conjecture these expressions. <coughs> so I guess one next thing would be to see what happens if, for example, take small steps, like what if we do S, S plus two, <coughs> ensuring that those are relatively prime, what's gonna happen? So, and uh, so yeah, thanks for listening. <coughs>
or so the maximum size? Yeah. Um, no, I, I'm not sure. Does that, does that follow something interesting? I don't know how that works. Oh, sorry. In addition, also I have the parameter of the maximum size. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, it's like, like a partition where you have as many S minus ones. Like, it's going to be S minus one, just like fill in a box, probably. Because mm -hmm. you have that, that, that lemma. So basically, just take a partition. Oh, yeah. Paper, so right? it's just Parameter S minus one, yeah. make it either a square or almost a square, and then fill in the entire square. I think you can. 